Perfect. Thank you, Tim. <clears throat> Welcome, uh, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Michael Deininger. I'm an associate professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering in the section of Design and Innovation at the Technical University of Denmark. And I have the honor and ple pleasure to chair this PhD defense today. I would like to remind everybody that we will record this meeting. And I would also like to ask that you do not use the chat function until after Maria's presentation. First, I would like to welcome the examination committee, Professor Jörn Bollmann. He's the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering and the Science Director of Strategic Sustainable Development at Blekinge Institute of Technology in Sweden. Next, we have Dr. Mariale Moreno. She's a senior lecturer in circular economy at the University of Exeter in the United Kingdom. And then we have Associate Professor Stieg Irving Olsen from the section of quantitative sustainability assessment at uh, DTU management here in Denmark. Secondly, I would welcome uh, PhD candidate Maria Kravchenko and her supervisors, Professor Tim McAloon from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at DTU, as well as Associate Professor Daniela Pigoso, also from the Department of Mechanical Engineering here at DTU. And finally, I would like to welcome all of our audience. <clears throat> Maria completed her PhD studies at the section of Design and Innovation at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the Technical University of Denmark. As part of her PhD defense, the candidate Maria Kravchenko will give a lecture based on her thesis that is titled Sustainability Screening is a Decision Support for Early Stage Circular Economy Development, Moving the Sales of Circular Economy in Direction of Sustainability. Her lecture is scheduled to last 45 minutes, after which we will take a 10 minute break. If anyone in the audience wants to ask Maria a question, please send those questions to me in the chat during the break. If we have time at the end, I will try to give you a chance to ask the question at the end of the session. After this 10 minute break, <clears throat> we have 90 minutes scheduled for the defense where the examination committee will ask Maria questions. If time allows, I will invite the supervisors to ask questions. And lastly, as I just mentioned, members from the audience may also ask Maria questions. In total, the PhD defense may last no more than three hours. With this, I would like to hand it over to Maria. Maria, the floor is yours. Sounds great. Welcome to everybody. It is my pleasure today to present my work, which is titled as Sustainability Screening as a Decision Support for the Early Stage of Circular Economy Development. The agenda for today goes as follows. First, I'll introduce the context, meaning that why we need to move from a current linear economy to a circular economy and circular economy as means towards sustainability, followed by a research framing that presents the theoretical background chosen for the thesis, as well as research questions, followed by a methodology, presentation of main results, conclusion, highlighting main research contributions and arenas for future research. So before we understand what circular economy is, let us look at the current linear economy. The, li the linear economy functions in a way that it takes resources, um, puts them um, into production to make useful products that are then put for consumption and then disposed when no longer needed. I have um, chosen a particular example of a closing industry. For instance, it has been estimated that roughly more than 100 billion of units uh, of clothing is made a year. To make this quantity, there are resources needed, for instance, roughly um, also 100 billion of uh, cubic meter of water is used annually, as well as energy, transport and related emissions. 
At the same time, the textile industry employs more than 300 million people worldwide. So what happens to clothing when it's produced? Of course, it's purchased. Uh, however, some reports show that um, in the last years, some clothing are only worn uh, seven to 10 times, despite the fact that an average household in the European Union consumes up to 4% or spends up to 4% of the average expenditure on clothing, despite the fact that the price of clothing has been decreasing. Uh, what happens to the clothing when it's no longer used? Um, um, some reports say that um, vast majority of this clothing is either a landfill incinerated or dissipated in the, in the environment and only less than 1% is recycled back into the system. The same report has estimated that this equals to great economic losses. More than 100 billion of US dollars are lost as worth of materials. So when looking at this system, re we realize that this system is highly resource intensive. It requires energy, water, other resources, as well as labor and produces emissions. At the same time, this system is categorized as a system with high losses, inefficiencies and risks, which further, which further exacerbate climate uh, in resource and inequality crises. What, what is the alternative to this linear economy? There comes in play a circular economy, which basically um, aims to transform the linear system into closed loop systems where um, all the value that is embedded into, in, in the products and processes is kept for longer while preserving the resources. Circular economy offers a variety of such strategies that both uh, aim at this preservation as well as offer different business opportunities. Let us look and um, continue uh, this clothing example. Some strategies under circular economy could be focused on uh, developing alternative materials. For instance, a new material, Pinatex, which looks like leather, made from fibers from used pineapple leaves. Another strategy here is, um, uh, uh, is about reducing impact in use. And another fabric was patented, patented by a company, by a Finnish company that aims at reducing microfiber shedding. Another um, example of a strategy that is focused on reuse, a famous brand Patagonia created a platform that could be used to uh, sell used clothing. Last but not least, a recycling strategy. For instance, larger brands like H&M offer in-store garment collection um, in exchange of uh, vouchers for uh, um, uh, with sales and percent reductions. As we could see, this is um, the economy that provides multiple value creation mechanisms which are decoupled from consumption of finite resources. And um, with this notion, it becomes uh, quite interesting for businesses to explore these opportunities and not only for the clothing industry, but also for other sectors within manufacturing and hence the focus of this uh, research project. Because of the notion of circular economy to connect uh, resource preservation and business opportunities, it has been linked as uh, and has been cited as major means towards, towards achieving sustainability, meaning uh, contributing to holistic um, to holistic positive impact on economic, social, and environmental dimensions. However, the question here, do all circular economy strategies bring such a positive contribution? For instance, if looking um, back uh, into uh, those strategies that I presented earlier, alternative materials aim at substituting plastic and cotton, which are resource intensive. At the same time, there are studies that point out that um, recyclability of those alternative material, materials has not been yet explored and raw materials that might not be recyclable in the, uh, by the technology that is available at the moment. At the same time, um, some materials may bring a lifetime of a garment um, uh, to, to a critical low. Another example of the reuse and share strategy that aims at prolonging a lifetime of a garment at the same time uh, delaying production of new garments. However, there's been some uh, reports saying that such um, increased reuse would require increasing cleaning and washing and probably transport. 
In terms of, of a recycling strategy, which aims at bringing material back into the system by offering a recycled material, uh, which then uh, could substitute virgin materials. At the same time, there are there have been questions have been questions about uh, social responsibility and working conditions at the recycling stations, especially the ones um, that are um, um, located outside of the Europe of, of here. So this question led uh, led um, us to consider what does the research say about circular economy. And what we could see is that a circular economy is not more environmentally beneficial by default and in not, not in all circumstances. Hence, a case-by-case -case holistic assessment is needed. Additionally, uh, the link to social sustainability was missing or unclear in, in some of the reports on circular economy. And if circular economy cannot contribute to a social sustainability, it would then compromise the holistic sustainability. Additionally, um, it was discovered that there was a lack of an approach uh, to measure sustainability contribution of circular economy before and after implementation. This, led, uh, this has driven main research motivation to investigate solutions that could support sustainability measurement of circular economy initiatives in their early development stages. Before we jump into uh, work and main uh, objective, let me introduce some theoretical background. So first and foremost, the sustainability interpretation that was taken in this research was based on a triple bottom line approach, an approach that consider a balanced evaluation and consideration of an economic, environmental and social dimensions. So three lines, three pillars of sustainability. Then um, as with any sustainability assessment, the goal here is to integrate sustainability issues that cover these three dimensions into decision making. How? By helping to identify and assess sustainability performance or effects of proposed solutions. Basically ask, uh, answering the question, how well does a solution perform? And on the basis of that, a choice can be taken to proceed with that solution that delivers the best performance. Um, hence, um, to, to approach sustainability assessment in this project, an indicator-based approach was selected. Additionally, uh, a focus was to ensure that sustainability assessment can be uh, deployed in the early stages of development. This is because decisions made early in the development process determine the sustainability consequences of proposed actions which means that the earlier sustainability assessment is deployed, the earlier the decision makers um, are able to identify possible, um, uh, possible effects and then introduce improvements before the uh, design or before the solution is locked for any changes. Therefore, the focus of this project was also on understanding how to support early stages of decision making with uh, sustainability assessment. Taking into account the research considerations and the theoretical background, uh, the main research objective was to conceptualize, develop and evaluate a framework for sustainability screening in the context of circular economy within the manufacturing industry. A main research question was developed to reach the objective um, stated as how to provide decision-making support for industrial actors in manufacturing industry um, and to perform sustainability screening uh, of circular economy initiative in the early development stages. In order to answer this question, several sub-questions were formulated. For instance, a few questions, few first questions focused on understanding what performance indicators exist that will be able to measure economic, environmental and social aspects of sustainability. Additionally, uh, we, uh, the aim was to understand how to categorize those indicators that they will be able to, um, to provide a meaningful uh, basis for selection of those indicators for a particular circular economy initiatives proposed by industrial actors. These two questions were answered with the help of study A. 
Question number three focused on understanding how to support a systematic selection of those indicators that could be employed for the screening of circular economy initiatives. This study, this question was answered um, in study B. Last but not least, fourth question was aiming to understand how to support decision making uh, when conflicting um, or when conflicting situations, uh, also known as trade offs, arise between sustainability performance indicators. And this question was answered um, in study C. In order to understand how to plan the research and what methods would be applicable to, uh, to help answering the research questions, a design research methodology was followed. This methodology provides a useful framework to, to be able to, to plan the research so it's uh, achievable within the, the time frame of, uh, uh, that was set, but also to help investigate uh, suitable methods to employ during uh, the research as well as to help evaluate in the research. So it provides um, uh, an understanding um, or it provides clear understanding of the contribution to theory and practice. For instance, in order to answer research questions one and two under study A, um, first a systematic literature review was employed to understand the state of the art of indicators and then it helped to, um, to lead the conceptualization phase, uh, which focused on developing the support, meaning on understanding how to categorize those indicators that were available. This study has led to particular results, which was a consolidated database of leading performance indicators. These results were published in the journal paper, journal paper one. In study B, the focus was on understanding how to transform the uh, knowledge from um, and co conceptualizations in, in study A into a sort of hands-on support. So it focused on conceptualizing previous knowledge as well as uh, employing a case study approach to evaluate the usefulness of the proposed um, uh, solutions. This study uh, resulted in a in the procedure for a systematic indicator selection, as well as a user guide. And the procedure, um, uh, in the detailed description of the procedure, as well as its evaluation with the help of case studies was published in the journal paper too. Last but not least, under study, study C was, uh, was driven by several research methods. For instance, firstly, a literature review was deployed to understand what was needed to propose trade-off navigation, and then using the knowledge, uh, first, first, um, first example of the procedure was conceptualized, which was then tested uh, with the help of uh, experts. This led to several results, um, a trade-off navigation support, a user guidance, and um, uh, which were disseminated with the help of several papers, a conference paper, number three, and a journal paper, number four. The results. Uh, study A commenced by answering research question one, which was focused on understanding leading performance indicators that exist in the literature. In total, uh, more than 279 leading performance indicators were extracted from the literature. Um, and placed in a, an indicator pool. Then they were classified according to triple bottom line dimensions, which were selected in the studies such as social, economic, environmental, and related aspects, as well as um, indicator attributes as registered with corresponding indicator attributes, for instance, name, detailed descriptions, formulas, units of measurement, and purpose of measuring a particular indicator. This was done to address several challenges encountered in the literature. For instance, it's been, uh, it's been stated that doing sustainability assessments in the early decision stages can be quite complex. And this is why uh, this research focused on indicators, but not just simple indicators, um, the indicators called leading indicators or uh, often referred to as proactive indicators because they are very useful for early stages to help assessing the potential impacts, reveal potential um, 
negative performances and then of course uh, provide opportunities for improvements. Additionally, leading indicators utilize information that might be available already at hands at the decision makers, which also makes them useful um, in, in, in practice. Another challenge that was addressed is this holistic sustainability inclusion, meaning that um, we included uh, three dimensions and not only several uh, or not only uh, one or two, which reduces sustainability to those dimensions and then connected those with the um, uh, corresponding indicators, which then were connected with uh, required data to calculate those. Um, the study then proceeded to understanding how uh, else to categorize indicators to enable sort of their um, uh, selection for circular economy initiatives. And here, um, a framework that con consisted of 13 circular economy strategies um, uh, covering different types of strategies uh, from virtual offerings to um, sharing platforms to um, access uh, product service systems all the way to recycle and recover was selected. This was done to address too narrow focus on previous literature on only recycling as one of the key strategies of circular economy. Additionally, indicators were categorized according to business processes, which were five and um, were typical operational processes for any manufacturing industry. This was done to address the lack of support for co-development of circular economy strategies, meaning that it was necessary to help synchronizing decisions across business processes to help realize circular economy strategies. This led to um, a consolidation of a database, and now you, you can see a snapshot of a, of, a, of, a, of a workbook that basically lists some indicators and their attributes that are then uh, uh, classified according to sustainability dimensions. The, the uh, worksheet goes on and on. Of course, there are also other criteria such as business processes and circular economy strategies. However, they did not fit on this, on this slide. A few of the main findings of, from study A uh, were that uh, there was a clear dominance of indicators covering um, environmental dimensions and least were um, covering the social dimension. Additionally, there was a dominance of production or firm-centric indicators, for instance, measuring materials on site, energy waste costs. There was a clear lack of environmental indicators present for a business model and social indicators for product development. However, what could be seen is the evidence that each single circular economy strategy that was taken um, in the research was covered by indicators from all uh, through a bottom line perspective. The results of this study were published in the journal paper of cleaner production, uh, in the journal of cleaner production, as well as conceptualized in a database that uh, was made open access. Study B, uh, of course, um, utilized or relied on the results from study A. And here the question uh, probably you are sitting and wondering is, um, there are so many indicators, how do we know um, how to select relevant ones if we, for instance, only want to aim for several strategies and of course not all of them, and how many to select? So basically the question here is, how do we know what indicators are there in that inner cube of the, of, of that larger cube, right? So driven by this question, um, we, uh, a procedure for a systematic indicator selection was proposed. And this procedure um, em emphasizes several main steps and several sub steps that all ensure that indicators are chosen contextually and only, only key indicators are chosen. And of course, not, um, not the ones that are irrelevant. For instance, in step one, uh, it was necessary to ensure that uh, a, a proposed circular economy initiative was detailed enough to understand what kind of circular economy strategies it involved, as well as what business processes would be engaged. It served as inputs into step two, which was about selecting indicators from a narrow, narrowed subset of indicators. Step two was also focused on uh, prioritizing some sustainability aspects if there are some of concern. 
as well as selecting suitable indicator based on the contextual settings, for instance, depending on the product type of a company, of a, depending on the circular economy initiative proposed, etc. And then it also supported customization and creation of new indicators. Um, which then served as outputs to step three, which highlighted how many indicators should be there and um, that it, they should cover as a set, a holistic triple bottom line perspective. This procedure was formulated to address several challenges encountered in the literature. First and foremost, it addressed this uh, sort of static lists of non-contextual indicators. And by ensuring that um, a company can go through step one and then uh, sort of um, divide or um, yeah, divide a circular economy into sort of separate pieces and understand what they mean behind it, it helps also to narrow down their scope and understand their objective behind pursuing that strategy. It also helped to help um, 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 to it, this pro procedure also helped to address a challenge of making prioritization and sort of uh, narrowing down to a relevant list. Uh, by helping to, again, disassemble a circular economy initiative and seeing what circular economy strategies and business processes are there involved, so to, it, it helps to see how co-development should happen of those circular economy strategies. Another challenge addressed was the complexity of obviously this tool, but also uh, um, and many others that this uh, procedure allowed for a gradual selection, meaning that it was again contextually based and the guidance was provided on the number of indicators and the type of indicators that should be selected. Additionally, a challenge of how to apply indicators was also overcome by um, using a, a, a database from the previous study which had all the information registered about how to call it, calculate indicators and also how to apply them as a set. This procedure together with the proposed uh, database was then tested in, um, in real settings through a case study approach. Um, in the case study, the main objective was to understand to what extent the proposed procedure and the database could help identify relevant indicators for those circular economy initiatives that were proposed by companies. Uh, the, the target companies were manufacturing companies producing uh, products and services from bio or techno cycle um, that should have had the proposal of a circular economy initiative in their early stages. In total, seven small, medium and large enterprises participated coming from a variety of sectors. The key result was that um, indeed the procedure and the corresponding database with indicators were found useful for providing guidance on selecting A, relevant indicators, B, number of relevant indicators, and C, indicator as I said that could be applied in uh, during development processes. The results of this study were published in a second paper, journal paper, as well as uh, conceptualized in the user guide uh, which was sort of seemed, uh, which seemed as a hands-on support for uh, application of that procedure in companies. The user guide came also with a workbook that did not only contain the database of indicators, but also additional uh, worksheets that helped to clarify uh, what company was aiming at, for instance, stating the objectives and stating why they were selecting the indicators. Study C, um, it's an interesting study because it was first driven by a finding from previous studies where indicators were selected for uh, some companies and also applied uh, to, 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 um, to understand and compare different solutions. And in, in, in that study, when the finding was that uh, when a set of indicators was selected and two solutions compared, for instance, one of them was a circular one. The uh, results showed that um, there was no perfect solution. So there were some indicators where performance was uh, a bit worse than the other. And the question here um, that uh, the company uh, asked is how do actually to make a decision if we see such conflicting uh, results? And to make a decision here in this context or in this situation would mean that trade-offs should be made, meaning that 
some features or one solution should be compromised in order to be able to, uh, to proceed the, with the other. So this finding um, from a practical world um, guided the investigation where the trade-offs are um, something that are, is quite usual in, in those types of assessments. And indeed, literature stated that when operating with multiple indicators from social, economic, and environmental dimensions uh, will require navigating trade-offs. So trade-offs were inherent in those types of assessments. Additionally, what was found is that no approach was available to help navigate in trade-offs in a structured manner. So whenever a, a sort of roughly a, 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 an estimation or evaluation was done and uh, as such a result was seen that no, no solution was perfect, there was no approach to support um, um, further decision-making. And if there is no support, there's also little transparency and traceability of decisions saying that why actually one uh, solution was chosen if it still did not deliver sort of the, the best results on all the indicators um, that were selected. Guided by these challenges and gaps, uh, a literature review was performed under study C to understand what are the recommendations that could be translated into criteria to support development of a trade-off navigation. And several criteria or recommendations were collected. They were not um, meant to be exhaustive. They were meant to guide the development process uh, further in the study. Some of, these, some of those recommendations are knowledge that um, there is a need to use relevant tools to reveal trade-offs. There is a need to support evaluation when trade-offs are acceptable. Um, there's a need to provide prioritization principles that are clear and transparent to the decision makers, as well as a trade off navigation should be easy to be implemented by industrial actors so sort of during decision processes. Driven by those recommendations from the literature, study C proceeded by proposing a trade off navigation framework. The framework um, consisted of two or consists of two building blocks. Uh, one block um, uh, describes the requirements to the input data, uh, meaning that uh, it relies on understanding that there has to be a measurable approach to understand performance, but also to help revealing trade-offs. Input data um, was supported by some guidance on, on how to set this input data. And uh, as seen in, in, on the slide, input data also required stating what are the acceptable ranges for uh, different indicators or any other criteria, and to what extent they, they can, can be negotiated. This input data uh, was supported by step-by-step -step guidance uh, that consisted of several steps, again, aiming at a gradual analysis of what decisions are being made and how all the data that was entered in the input data affects uh, what solution sh shows best performance. This guidance was supported by a trade-off matrix, which helps to sort of visualize the decisions as they went. Here, um, the challenge was, the main challenge that was addressed uh, was obviously to cover the gap of no trade, uh, no, no trade-off support available at the moment. It provided a structured approach uh, as, uh, as, uh, as intended, and it also helped intended to provide transparency in um, acceptability of those trade-offs. Later in this study, a trade-off navigation framework with the corresponding guidance and a trade-off mat matrix was uh, um, evaluated with the help of experts. And the main objective was obviously to evaluate to what extent it helps to structure the process, to make decisions transparent and to provide some rules to make decisions. In total, eight industrial and 12 academic ex experts were involved in the evaluation. And as a result, the framework and corresponding guidances and matrices were found, found useful first for helping to make trade-offs explicit. So there was a clear uh, dialogue about that there are trade-offs. Um, second, for providing support for building argumentations for trade-off acceptability. And then next for providing prioritization techniques that could also reinforce a dialogue about 
uh, uh, the priority areas that are um, driving decisions um, in, in that context. Uh, here is again a snap snapshot of a trade-off navigation framework and the matrix. And as you could see, there is a lot of data, and this is also because it was driven by those requirements from the building block of input data. So the input data is entered as well as some other information about acceptability ranges and where they come from. So referencing, for instance, um, customer requirements or corporate intentions, etc. And when looking at the numbers that were entered by a company, but also understanding where do they come from, could, could also be seen that some um, some alternatives or solutions proposed meet the requirements pretty well, but not on all the indicators. And then the procedure, a step-by-step -step procedure aims to support this dialogue, uh, asking questions about where the data, that, where the data comes from and to what extent those acceptable ranges, to what extent they're placed in a sort of in, in a logical manner, et cetera. So this just, an example of how it looks in the, as a supporting tool to that trade-off navigation framework. The results uh, for study C were several. First, uh, there was a consolidated list of recommendations that uh, could drive or helped developing the framework. And first they were published in a paper three, which was a conference paper. Then, uh, a, a paper, a journal paper, paper number four was published, which um, described in details a proposed trade-off navigation framework, as well as, as its evaluation with um, um, industrial and academic experts. Additionally, a, a, a sort of simpler user guide was also developed to provide, again, a hand, hands-on support for manufacturing companies following the, the uh, the logic of navigation, as well as a workbook that consists of, consisted of that trade-off uh, matrix. And the user guide, of course, contained guidance on, on, the, on, um, on the different building blocks of that navigation framework, but also uh, um, guidance through the steps of the procedure. So they are, again, done in a gradual manner and then if needed, returned back to the um, input data. In order to conclude, we could see that um, uh, this study, this research um, has contained several studies, which all aimed at answering particular research questions. And by doing so, um, several um, results emerged a consolidated database, a procedure for systematic indicator selection, and a trade-off navigation um, framework to support decision-making in conflicting uh, results between sustainability indicators. Few key contributions of each result could be highlighted. First and foremost, um, study A contributed with a state-of-the-art on leading performance indicators for sustainability assessment. Second, it also contributed to advance the discussion on the use of leading indicators as an approach to sustainability um, assessment in the early decision stages. When reviewing the literature, um, um, they were sort of found that thus, even though those indicators are useful, they're not well employed in the liter in practice. Therefore, there was a need to advance the discussion and uh, remind on, on about the existence of leading indicators uh, for sustainability. This study also helped connecting indicators with triple bottom line dimensions and different aspects, uh, various operational business processes, and numerous circular economy strategies. Study B contributed by proposing a dynamic approach for a systematic indicator selection that relied on contextual settings. And study C contributed um, to the literature by prescribing a structured approach to support decision-making between conflicting sustainability indicators. But it also contributed to the literature to advance the discussion on including trade-off analysis in sustainability assessments because this was also 
a finding from a literature review that trade-offs might be inherent, but they are not often discussed. When combining the results of these three studies, we could, uh, what was seen is that they emerged as elements of a sustainability screening framework for the early stages of circular economy development meaning that uh, with uh, this proposal or combining the results and proposing this screening, um, the evidence from uh, empirical investigations show that indeed it is able to provide decision-making support for manu manufacturing companies in making assessment of their circular economy initiatives um, and their performance from a triple bottom line perspective. Uh, overall, the aim with this uh, support is to be able to, to actually uh, disseminate it in industries and see whether it actually could support design and selection of an initiative that maximizes beneficial outcomes on all dimensions of sustainability. The conclusion proceeds by highlighting some contribution to practice. This PhD project was a part of a larger project, project uh, called Circuit. The Circuit project ran in the Nordic countries, which allowed to basically understand uh, and test older developed approaches and tools in, in real life settings in the Nordics. The circuit project contained six uh, focus areas. And as we could see, it tried to address um, a different spectrum of, um, of, um, of business processes, which were required to transition to a circular economy. For instance, developing business models, products, assets, uh, closing the loop and engaging and collaborating across value chains. Last but not least, you can see sustainability screening asking a question, is circular more sustainable? And this was done with purpose because anytime a new solution, either a new circular business model or a circular product was proposed, then there was a time to screen or apply the approach and the indicators and then the logic of trade-offs in the proposed solutions. So it could indeed be tested in, in the early stages. So this project allowed to, to see how um, those uh, areas function together and how useful the sustainability screening is. It also allowed to go on on-site, to, 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 to conduct on-site workshops with Nordic companies to allow its testing, improving and dissemination. Few of the key uh, contributions to practice um, to highlight is first and foremost, uh, this, uh, the results of this project helped to connect sustainability dimensions with measurable indicators in relevant data, which often cited as a, as a key challenge because um, there, there are still struggles to understand how to make sustainability operational and also how to measure basically the performance within sustainability. And the, hence the question, it, it basically helped to understand what has to be measured, how and what for. Another contribution to practice was this time efficiency in locating a suitable and manageable set of indicators for a circular economy initiative and focus. Imagine going from um, more than 279 initially available to potentially 50, 40, and then reducing it to the, to the advised 7, 10, 10 or 15 indicators. Additionally, it provided a practical sort of approach to making creative dialogue about trade-offs and um, uh, also facilitating a reconsideration of those proposed solutions and decision criteria. So basically asking why does it matter and why does a company want to do particular solutions? Uh, despite the, uh, uh, the exciting results that were achieved during this uh, research, of course, um, it, it also laid a foundation for uh, future research arenas. And I would like to highlight some of those. For instance, one of the directions that the, re the future research could advance is to propose new indicators. Um, during, uh, as the results re revealed, there are some gaps in indicators. So future research could um, try um, to fill in those gaps 
Additionally, future research could, could focus on proposing sector-specific indicators because they were not sector-specific in the database that was developed in this research. The focus could also be expanded on biosector. Another direction for the future research could be proposing indicators to measure sustainability at a strategic level. So basically into, taking into account management processes, not just the operational processes that, was, that were taken into account in this project. Next, uh, a mapping of the relationship between the consolidated indicators could be done. So how to connect those indicators, because one indicator could act as a, a variable of another one, which further would um, sort of make it easier to work with indicators and variables needed to calculate. Another arena could be expanding the empirical investigation, for instance, to include other circular economy initiatives and strategies, which means that um, um, sort of when employing or through a case study, uh, which highlighted the usefulness of the proposed procedure and the database. Um, the case studies um, uh, helped to see or were only conducted on the solutions that were proposed by companies. And those solutions did not cover all the spectrum that circular economy uh, sort of uh, are uh, capable of doing. So it could be uh, interesting to expand the scope to include other strategies and see whether the indicator uh, that were classified according to the strategies, they're indeed useful for the strategies. Also a comprehensive evaluation of the, of the impact of the proposed uh, uh, framework uh, could be tested, meaning that in this research, the, uh, the emphasis was done on the usefulness so how useful it is to achieve the intended uh, purpose, but also partially on the, on the usability of those tools that were developed, but no comprehensive evaluation was done whether it actually is used and whether decisions are taken correspondingly. Another arena could be understanding how to um, sort of, how to replicate that logic that was used in this study to propose similar sustainability screening for circular economy in other contexts or in other economic areas, for instance, construction or service provision. Last but not least, future research could um, expand on, on understanding how to use these leading indicators together with um, uh, approaches that were designed particularly for circular economy measurements. For instance, um, research could propose a guidance how to use um, for the complementary use of, of this screening, uh, relying on leading indicators together with existing approaches uh, and metrics within circular economy or which were designed particularly for the circular economy context. So it would be interesting to see how complementary the results would be, whether there are trade-offs as well as to compare the, for instance, use context in what um, circumstances different metrics is useful, to what extent these different results could drive improvements or to, um, to what extent these results, these um, approaches could, could, could help comparing options and could sort of help benchmarking companies. So this is just a Combine or uh, a proposal for future research. If any of a curious soul is watching, maybe it's something uh, we could talk about later. But I'll thank you for uh, this lecture and um, I think I'm done. All right, thank you very much for your presentation, Maria. Uh, <clears throat> now is uh, time for a 10 minute break. We will come back at uh, two o'clock and reconvene the defense. I would at this point like to remind the audience that if you would like to ask Maria a question, please send them to me in a direct message through the chat addressed to me only during this break. 
Thank you again, Maria, for a fantastic presentation, and we'll see everybody back in 10 minutes.